tight, so I'll try to do this quick because we have another lecture after this. So my small talk is just going to be about a new kind of modality device that you might be, com you might be seeing coming to an ER near you uh, in the future. Uh, it's, it's called Verboa. So I have no financial disclosures, even though I'll be basically advertising this device during the talk. Um, and um, I like to take a, uh, thank the small talks team from LA number 60. So you're in the CCT or whatever critical area of the ER, and you have a trauma code, you have a notification that there's a patient that has a stab wound to the torso, uh, tachycardic, systolic symptoms in the 50s or 60s. You know what to do. You call the level one uh, trauma code. You do ABCs, IVO2 monitor. You're resuscitating the patient. You do a fast. You see hemoperitoneum. You know this patient needs definitive management in the OR. Um, but are there other things that we can do? We initiate MTP. We're doing everything. You can even get the TXA on board. You're, you're, you're an all-star. You're doing everything right. But what if, for example, this patient becomes pulseless in the field? Uh, there's been some literature saying, oh, you can do an ED thoracotomy in the hopes of cross-clamping uh, the aorta to kind of perfuse the head and the heart and reduce the, the, the blood that's going into the abdomen or whatever is going down below. But all the, all the cases that have, been, that have underwent this type of procedure that's been in the literature has been really grim, uh, grim outcomes. So, so let's, let's take another, another look. So Reboa, is it, is, it is it a snake? Is it a boa constrictor? No. This is my only joke for this entire <laughs> Do a quick outline, uh, just do a little bit of the history of the device. Now, just, I really want to spend most of the time just getting you kind of visually familiar with what it might look like and what, if you ever do it, what the steps are, uh, with the video, and then just what the future directions might be. So, uh, this is just a schematic. Verboa stands for resuscitative uh, endovascular balloon occlusion of the aorta. It's basically self explanatory. You're basically taking an endovascular approach and doing a cross clamping of the aorta. Instead of just opening them up from the outside, you're kind of going through the femoral artery, um, as you can see here. So, uh, just in the, this is started like in the 1950s. There was like a military doctor who uh, first described this. So, this, this idea has been around for a while. He did this military paper with this crude looking device. Um, and then there's been a, a slew of studies. I'm not going to go into detail, but like in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, animal data that showed great kind of results. They were looking at all the lactates and all this, all this stuff. They were, they were just hemorrhaging these pigs and then just like putting the, these devices in. And, and there was like a lot of promising animal data. Uh, and then ever since then, there's just been a lot of uh, kind of small observational prospective trials, case series, case studies. Uh, that aren't you know very strong because of, they're not like randomized control trials, but uh, they do show like some increased benefit in the patients that were selected to have Reboa versus doing a resuscitative thoracotomy. And you can, if you actually notice, one of these, one of the guys used to work here, Scalia. He's, I think he's, this script's out, of, out from Maryland, and there's a few other ED trauma centers in the country that are kind of incorporating Reboa into their practice and, and trying to compile more data. Um, some more meta-analyses. There's a lot of papers coming out. Again, just looking at the baseline data, which is all observational, so a lot of inherent bias. And so it's just something that we need to look, more, look to the future to compile more data and get more stronger evidence. Um, again, another, I don't want to kill you with numbers, but I just wanted you to take notice. So this is a case series of six patients. And what you'll notice is what you're cross-clamping the aorta, really including the aorta from inside. Uh, you'll notice that some of these numbers, this guy was pulseless, the 59-year-old gunshot one was pulseless. They, they put the Reboa in, they got an immediate systolic blood pressure, and he came out alive. And there's four out of these six patients came out alive in this case series of, of patients that had traumatic uh, hemorrhage and then they used the Reboa. So it's, it looks great. Um, obviously, it's not the greatest sort of evidence, but everything is pointing in the right direction. Uh, this is just something I pulled from the website. So this is a company that's actually come out with a new device that I'm going to talk about. In the past, when you try to do a robo, you had to take a bunch of kind of components. You had to take like a, a Cook balloon. And you ended up have, have to using like a 12 French or 14 French kind of catheter to, to put into their femme. It, it's kind of tricky and it's a really big size. So now this Reboa is like a, it's, a, it's all compartmentalized and they're using a seven French catheter, which is a little easier. And you can see there's a, there's a large number, this is the most updated numbers that they have of people that are actually signing on to use the device. 
Uh, just a quick uh, schematic of the aorta. What we really need to know is aortic zone one and three. Those were the areas that you'd want to include. Uh, zone one starting from the left subclavian down to the celiac. If you're worried about any sort of like intra-abdominal hemorrhage, this is where you would go up to zone one. Zone three is basically if you're worried about pelvic hemorrhage, uh, like a fracture causing venous bleeding, there's a lot of instability due to, to hemorrhage in the pelvis. Or if you have like a vascular injury uh, further like distally, you can, you can try to occlude. And this will basically, the Revo is basically a temporizing measure to get these patients to definitive management, whether it's uh, IR or if it's in the OR. So this is where I'll talk about the videos to pull up. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna play this out, I'm just gonna describe what the, what the uh, person is doing, and we'll... He was on the external aspect. Uh, okay. Mute him. All right, so uh, this is basically, it's nice because in the past you'd have to put an A-line in the opposite leg to get a sense of what the actual blood pressure is. The Reboa has an A-line built in, so it's just showing that over here. So, as you can see here, we have, you basically want to get access. He, uh, the person in here is doing a, a 5 French micropuncture needle, but you can use any sort of old, uh, I'm sorry? I don't know if this is a, this might be a cadaver, or I don't know if it's a really nice thing. It looks good. But uh, you can use any sort of central line kit and get the needle out, and you're just getting, you're, just like you do a central line, you're, you're trying to cannulate the fem, femoral artery. Ideally, you'll be doing this under ultrasound guidance, so just imagine you're using ultrasound to get this. Obviously, it's a sterile procedure. You get the, you get the wire in, and then this is uh, basically part of a Reboa kit. He's inserting uh, the, uh, the seven French kind of dilator sheath complex. Uh, it's all one complex, it dilates, and it allows you to, you're threading it through. And, and and then basically you're pulling out the internal cannula with the wire. So at this point, you've actually placed in, it's really simple, you've placed in a, a device that has a sheet that, in which you can put the actual Reboa device in, and the, and, and the A-line as well. So in this case, he's just showing the zone one and zone three. He's describing that you just have to measure the Reboa device uh, externally with landmarks to see if you want to include zone one versus zone three. Uh, so basically there's like tick marks on the actual Reboa device. You go up to the sternal notch, is, uh, and measure it on the patient, and that's how far you'll put in the Reboa to, to include zone one. Or you can go up to the umbilicus or above the level of the umbilicus near the bifurcation to include zone three. So you just kind of have the number in mind, you know how far to advance. Why is zone two just so, being? So you don't, zone two, <laughs> zone two is just the neglected zone. Yeah, zone three is basically, because you want to know if there's anything like in the pelvis, you're basically including any, any kind of bleed in the pelvis or distally. In zone one, you generally do because anything in the abdomen might be bleeding, you're just getting all of the abdomen. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. You're sacrificing bowel, renal, all, all the sort, sort of perfusion of those organs in the hope to perfuse the head and the heart if you're doing zone one. Um, so this is basically the end of what I want to show you from this. and just continues on to a little bit of this video where he continues. Okay, so the next step is you're just flushing the balloon, make sure it insufflates like any other sort of balloon, like Foley that we've done before. Um, and you'll notice that, well, it doesn't say here, but it's actually a radio opaque media, a radio, yeah, it shows up when you, when you do an x-ray, so you'll know exactly where the balloon is. Um, I place the devices. Okay, so, um, and it has an atraumatic P-tip, which just allows you when you advance a robot, it doesn't like mess up lining of the aorta. Uh, and then there's this kind of, uh, you flush the A-line, make sure that that's all good to go. And you basically advance it over this sheet, and you can see it's obviously a real body doesn't look like this, but um, he's going up to zone one, he insufflates the balloon with the media, and you'll notice you get a very gratifying increase in your systolic <laughs> blood pressure <laughs> immediately. But this is actually what happens in real life, that's, what, that's how they describe it. You'll, you'll see immediately that the systolic blood pressure goes up um, in the A-line. So, and that's basically, once you do this, you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to think, oh, I've saved the day, the patient perfusing their head and heart, call it, we can, we can call it a good day, I can go home now. No, you just have to get the, the patient to the OR as soon as possible. Um, this is just a temporizing maneuver. Um, and so, 
I hope that kind of gives you a, a, a good sense of what the revoke can do. Um, obviously, there have been occlusion times that are too long. You don't want to have the patient occluded for more than 30 minutes. Uh, there's been documented times of like 60, 70 minutes, the patient does okay, but you, obviously with the controversy is that you might be causing more damage to organs that aren't being perfused over time. Um, and for some reason in Japan, there's a lot of Roboa uh, literature, because in Japan, the, a lot of the ED docs are trained in interventional radiology. Um, so they do all these procedures immediately as part of this, their trauma algorithm. And they've had some kind of conflicting studies about whether Roboa benefits. I don't know if that really generalizes to American practice because they might be just doing it on everybody who doesn't need it. Um, so basically, there's a uh, there's a uh, database that uh, these centers are compiling uh, called the Aorta Registry. Uh, basically, patients that are getting Reboa, and so hopefully they'll be able to get some prospective, really strong data to kind of guide when we can use these and what would be the appropriate thing. The other thing I want to mention is something called P-Reboa, which is basically like a compromise where they intermittently kind of insufflate the balloon uh, so that you're kind of uh, allowing some time for the gut and the other organs to get a little bit of perfusion while maintaining a little bit of systolic blood pressure increase to the head and the heart, kind of compromising between those two where you intermittently insufflate the Reboa. Those are my references. Um, I can leave a little bit of time for questions. One or two anyway. questions, anyway? Yeah. Uh, so if you're hitting the 30 minute mark, is there any literature on temporary, temporary, temporarily deflating the Rebola and then um, so, so the literature that's coming out right now, there's nothing that's super strong. This is like, there's a guy who, who did the video, his name is Dr. DeVos, I think he's one of these centers, but he basically is like a proponent of P. Reboa, which is partial Reboa, and I, he actually just starts out doing it. Uh, like, so I don't know what his inter, like, intervals are, but maybe like every five minutes he'll leave like a minute to perfuse. Uh, and he doesn't like completely, uh, completely uh, like take all the media out. He, may, he might just leave a little bit so there's a little bit of blood flow. And there's like some data that shows that it's got the animal data that shows that it, it, it shows good um, chemical markers. There's not as much shock when you look at the rest of the body and 